Good evening, everyone. Susan Campfield here with SueStampfield.com. Welcome to my craft room. I'm so glad you're with me tonight. How are you doing? I'm going to just tilt this a little bit. Welcome, welcome. Saturday night, time for our regularly scheduled Facebook Live. I'm a little bit late tonight going live, so thanks to all of you in the comments hanging out. So, um, yay! We're here. We're ready to craft. I'm super excited about tonight's card. We have been doing a whole series of fun fold cards together. And uh, we're going to do a, a replay tonight of uh, one of the folds that we did. Uh, it's the second one we did. And we're going to do a whole new take on it. And I'm so excited to... Um, figure that out with you. So uh, welcome everyone. So good to see you all. So glad that you're here. You have people from all over joining us. That's fantastic. So um, I wanted to remind you all to uh, subscribe to my free project sheets. Uh, those come out by email. The last one went out end of January. <laughs> so many of you have been emailing me going, I haven't gotten one. It's coming. It is coming. Um, the Crafter Noon uh, blog post went up this week and I was working very, very hard on that. And so that is available on my blog, SueStampfield.com. And that is the pop-out slider that so many of you were um, anxiously awaiting for. So that is finally available. You can follow along in the video if you'd like to purchase the extra extremely detailed step-by-step -step tutorial bundle that is available. So you can find all that there on cstampfield.com. If you go to subscribe, you can click on the free project sheet emails. So these uh, fun folds that we've been doing um, will be coming out in project sheet form. So just please be patient with me. Um, it is coming. So uh, let's take a look here. So I'm going to, um, oh, I also wanted to remind you that, first of all, hey, Jennifer Walsh. Uh, Jennifer is my moderator. She's fabulous. Um, she's here to help us out tonight. If you have a question and I missed your comment, go ahead and do the uh, at symbol and type Jennifer's name and um, she'll get an alert then and she'll try to flag me down so that I catch your comment because I get busy crafting and I miss what you're saying. So thank you for doing that, Jennifer. Uh, we play a little game here at Sue Stampfield. If you haven't joined one of our live adventures <laughs> before it gets a little crazy um my craft room desk is a mess i'd like to say it's a mess for certain reasons but the truth is it's always it's always a mess <clears throat> so yeah it's just how it is and i lose stuff while we craft always 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 and so when i lose something and i find it we all say found it and we take a sip so I have something very special in my cup tonight. Ooh, <laughs> it's even a special cup. So this will give you a little hint maybe on what we're making tonight. Does anyone know what this is? I could, I'm going to, I haven't lost anything, but I'm taking a sip, man. It's been, an, I've been waiting for this all day. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Ah, that's good. So this is a shamrock shape. Blah shamrock shake from mcdonald's and it's minty if you i love mint i'm just a sucker for anything minty and so we're gonna play with the uh, share a milkshake bundle tonight and we're gonna make a calorie free <laughs> shamrock shake uh, by stamping it and yes it is the shamrock shake from mcdonald's and i had Googled it and it said they weren't going to be out till February 20th. Well, that was not true because they are now available. So oh, you've never had one, Jennifer? Mm, it's really good. At Christmas, I did try the peppermint shake from uh, Chick-fil-A. That was amazing, but they only have that at Christmas. Um, so this is a get my minty fix here with the Shamrock Shake. So we're going to make a card tonight with this and somewhere on my desk. Oh yeah, here it is. I, I found it. So I even have, when I was at McDonald's, did you know they sell gift cards for McDonald's? Who knew, right? I mean, everybody has gift cards, I guess, but you can buy a McDonald's gift card. And so my idea for tonight's card was to do a St. Patrick's Day card 
with a shamrock shake on the front and then uh, gift them a uh, McDonald's gift card so that they could go buy their own um, or they could, you know, get fries and a burger if they want, whatever their choice, right? So that's what we're going to be making tonight. And, um, oh, and Oreo crumbs. Oh yeah. I don't know. Mine didn't get Oreo crumbs on it, but they've got other yummy ice cream drinks there, I think. So, um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. I love the stamp set. It's called share a milkshake and it makes the cutest cards. Um, I'm really embarrassed to turn the camera over you guys. <laughs> My desk looks like a bomb went off on it and it kind of sort of did. Um, okay. Let me just like, Oh, geez, Susan, seriously, I am such a messy crafter. I'm sure you guys are way tidier than I am. I got glue dots running amok. I've got, I've got, <laughs> I've got leprechauns. We did this little guy last time. We've kind of been in a, a, a St. Patty's Day mood, I guess. So, oops, okay. All right. I'm just trying to, <laughs> this is so embarrassing. All right. I was, I was, I had a little, uh, oops, before we started, I was cutting my cardstock and my designer paper for this card. And I realized that my measurements are wrong. So Jennifer, I did email you the measurements like two minutes before <laughs> seven 30 and there is an error on them. So, um, yeah, yeah just, yeah. I'll, I'll uh, let you know what the real one is. It was one of the designer papers numbers was wrong. So anyway, I've got it here for us. <laughs> all right i've like hmm, why is it doing that okay i'm getting weird things on my on my camera app all right we have um somewhat of <laughs> i've got a little what is that what's going on all right chaos chaos reigns okay i have a little space clear <laughs> let's go ahead linda found it today oh linda found something take a sip and i saw someone earlier in the comments had lost a die and found it so hmm we're here to support you in your find it adventures, right? So let's take a look at my desk. I think I've cleared enough, <laughs> enough of a space that, mm, yeah, almost mm, can't go too high here. Are you going to see stuff? All right, we're here. We're ready to rock. Got my yummy, yummy thing. Now this one is not calorie free. So we're going to make a paper one that is calorie free. So you may remember one of the cards I shared in a, the swap that I had gotten was this fun pop-up box fold card. And I thought this would be super cute to put the shake on it. So we are going to take this um, and redo this with a shake on it. This was the take we did together. Um, I After I did this one, I'll be really honest with you, I... I had regrets about the designer paper at the bottom. I thought it made it a little busy. Um, and so uh, I did another version. Oh, dang it. Yeah, well, who knows where that is? <laughs> Somewhere in this fiasco, there's another version. But if you'll, if you'll notice, Col uh, Colette's, these and bits, made this card. And Colette's was a little bit shorter. And funny story, um, she sent me a card, a beautiful card, actually. Let me show you the one that she sent me. Isn't that gorgeous with the fancy flora? And um, she sent me a note and uh, uh, Colette's on my team. And she said that she, um, when she was, funny story, um, the reason that hers was um, not as tall was she did this for a swap. It was a 43 card swap. And she inadvertently cut all of the 43 card bases short accidentally and then instead of wasting all that card stock she just fixed it right <laughs> so um so this one is the one we're going to make tonight the little bit taller one but that is an option um to go shorter what i like about the taller one and i'll tell you why i'm sticking with that is when you go to assemble it um having the, you see when it folds flat to go in the envelope this upper portion lines up with the top of the card um, that is a great way to position that you have this adhered in the right spot so with this one you kind of have to eyeball it that it's um you know a quarter inch higher so um sometimes some of us aren't that great at eyeballing including me sometimes so <laughs> i got adhesive on my fingernail so we're going to um we'll do the taller version tonight all right, I gotta take a deep breath. Oh, I've been running all day, you guys. Crazy, crazy, crazy. All right. I have cards. 
Sorry, someone told me I need to not talk when I walk away from the mic. And, and I really appreciate the feedback there because I forget. I just get crafting and I start running around. So I'm going to try and remember to wait and do my talking when I come back. So we are going to use, gosh, this looks long. I'm going to cut this right. I cut it in a real hurry. So I don't think that's right. Let's check it. Let's check it out, you guys. We are using a mint macaron tonight because we are all about mint. Now, it's not an exact match, but it's probably close. You could certainly also, if you prefer, do, um, you know, granny apple green like we did uh, in the last video. I wanted to use the gingham paper and that has uh, mint macaron in it and it has the word mint in it. So it seems like... <laughs> a good idea, right? Um, so Jennifer is dropping the link in the comments to the previous, um, the previous uh, box top pop-up card. Is that what we're calling it? What do we call it? Uh, <laughs> standing pop-up card. Thank you, Jennifer. All right. This piece is supposed to be, supposed to be, let me grab my cheat sheet. Hang on. Need to measure twice, cut once, right? It's supposed to be four and a quarter by 10 and a half. It, it, I'm not sure that it is. So I'm going to check it, you guys, because I cut this in a real hurry. Um, holy cow, it is. It's right. All right. So this is four and a quarter by 10 and a half. And we're going to score this one at a half an inch. Ooh, I'm not used to scoring on this. I almost scored it at the quarter inch. Um, you know what? I may need my big one, you guys. I'm just not. I certainly could score on this, but I I find this one easier because I can just lay it flat and don't need to shift the paper. I don't know. Each of us have our our little snobbiness about certain tools, right? <laughs> um, so I, I love the trimmer for some things, but mostly for cutting more than scoring. So I'm going to score this at a half an inch, one and three quarters inches, three and three quarter inches, and five inches. Okay. I do have these dimensions typed up on a little banner that I'll be sharing with you at the end of this video, as soon as I correct the one boo-boo. <laughs> so uh, Susan Walker, it is a live video, Susan. You are not watching an old one. You are, we are live right now. So, so glad that you're tuning in with us. Um, so the card base, Jennifer's got the sizes for that here. And again, I'll, I'll share all of them at the end, but this is four and a quarter uh, by 10 and 10 and a half, score it at a half inch, one and three quarters inches, three and three fourths inches, and five. Our next piece, chaos. There is no room on this desk. Oh my goodness. Too many cards. I've got cards everywhere. Card explosion. <laughs> so uh, this piece is five by three. And we're going to score it at half an inch and at one and three quarter inches okay so those may sound familiar because we did the same on the other one but it's only those two so uh three by five squared at a half inch and three fourths inch take down this one hope you all got to see that the mar are the marks at the top of the scoring yeah, these all these these little guys, these little markers are all movable, so I can shift them around depending on uh, what I'm supposed to be doing. So it's really helpful when I'm scoring a whole bunch of stuff um, to make sure I get them right. All right, I think I'm done with my scoring. I'm going to put my scoring tool away. We're going to hide that comment so that we can see. And all right, got my cheat sheet here. I don't need it. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and fold on all of these score lines. And I'm going to fold them all uh, mountain, which means up, right? So all are mountain. I'm going to go ahead and give those a good crease. If you crease these well, it, it uh, helps your project stand up better. I feel really fritzy tonight, you guys. Like... <laughs> You're going to have to watch me. If you see me about to glue something down wrong, please tell me. <laughs> ah, that's where that uh, lag time is going to get me, though. This is why we why we just kind of uh, 
test things out, right? We just kind of practice it. So I am going to be gluing down this, um, this portion to my card base. So I want to put some strong adhesive on there. My favorite strong adhesive is the tear and tape. So I'm going to just run a strip of tear and tape along this. This is that one and a half inch score that we did, the skinny section. So <laughs> you're going to put something a little stronger in your zero Gatorade tonight, Susan. I'm having, look what I'm having. Guys, I got to lose more stuff because this is really good. Mm. Mm. Ah, shamrock shake. Everybody take a sip just because. <laughs> All right, we're going to peel off the backing on that. And we want to adhere this to make kind of a box shape. And so we're going to um, fold down both of these panels till they're flat. And then we're going to just press. I think I got a little shamrock shake on there, but it's on the bottom. That's all right. <laughs> and so now it formed that kind of box. That's what makes it stand up. That is the stand-up part. Now we're going to do the pop-up part. So just to recap, I put the adhesive on the first score and I folded it two scores that's at the second score and just pressed it flat. And that adheres it in the right spot to make that little box. Okay, and then we have this piece. This is the little pop-out piece. So we're going to crease this on the score lines. Again, I'm doing them mountain okay and we're gonna put some tear and tape across the top uh, half inch section of this again and sure we are susan i've lost the <laughs> i've lost the end of my tear and tape i found it quick take a drink <laughs> mm. now the truth comes out if susan's got a really yummy drink she loses more stuff so that she can have more of it <laughs> I told my son he could have what was left when I'm done with the video, but there may not be anything left at this rate. All right, so I have some tear and tape on that half inch piece, but I'm going to put another piece of tear and tape here. Okay. So let's just break this down. This piece is going to be attaching, this front panel will be attaching to our card. This part's going to stick on the, the box and this part is going to stick near the top. Okay. So before I stick that down, I want to add some designer series paper on this to make it extra cute. So I carefully had it cut and then carefully lost it because that's how we roll. Okay. I think this is it. No, this is not the right size. All right. This is the one I had trouble with right before and I was racing because okay i guess my measurements were right i just thought gosh that can't be right where's the one i cut and i thought it was wrong because i guess it wasn't is this right no this is wrong oh susan <laughs> i should be drinking wine i guess oh my goodness all right i'm gonna cut this uh i'm gonna cut it and then tell you if i did it right so don't <laughs> Just sit tight. Let's just make sure that I, okay, yeah. Um, so for the lower portion of your box pop-out section, um, you are going to put a four inch by one and three quarters inch piece on there. All right, where'd my adhesive go, guys? Um, by the way, this is the Country Gingham Designer Series paper. This was out of stock. It is back. It came back in, I believe, yesterday. So if you've been waiting to add this one to your, um, your collection, it is back in stock. Hallelujah. And I love this paper because it goes with so many things. So we're using the Share a Milkshake set tonight. Now I use the Share a Milkshake on one of the pop-out slider cards. I also use the Country Gingham. I just think they go together just really nicely. So um, this paper has the blues and the greens for pretty spring cards but it also has the red and the pinks um, for other things so um so this is the the uh sliding pop out slider card sorry the pop out slider card this is one of five designs that i did that is now available um, as a tutorial bundle and that just reminds me um i wanted to um 
just thank you, those of you who have been sending me so many nice messages. I even made a little graphic <laughs> of Debbie's uh, email that she sent me because um, I just I appreciate that your feedback so much and that you are loving that tutorial. So thank you for that. All right, we're going to go ahead and stick on our four by, no, we're not because my adhesive's not working. Oh, wait, I lost something. I lost the adhesive and look, I found it. So we get to take another sip. <laughs> my stuff is melting. Mm -hmm. Ah, minty fresh. Okay, so we're going to stick this on the lower part. Seriously, I'm getting more adhesive on me tonight than the card. That's really sad when you're using a tape runner. <laughs> I don't even have the excuse of like liquid glue or anything. All right. So that's on the lower portion. And then I'm going to put some on the upper portion. You can see why I need to do this before sticking that on. So let's go ahead and add some adhesive to this. There we go. Now you can, uh, you can purchase that tutorial bundle, uh, but the people that uh, participated in the Crafternoon class, not only uh, did they get the bundle for free, they also got a packet to make one of the cards along with me in a video. You can get a packet by placing a $50 order in my online store. Yep, we got that top piece on. The top piece is three and a quarter by four. All right. So, um, so there's uh, yeah, two different ways to participate. You can um, just purchase a tutorial after the fact, or you can place an order. So the people that are ordering in February here are going to qualify for the uh, Crafternoon Fun Fold in March. And those of you that placed an order last month, uh, the February Crafternoon will be coming up later this month. All right, we've got our adhesive off of there. And this is the part where we're again, we're going to fold down the top two sections and we're going to line this up. I got to think, I got to think before I stick. <laughs> so I'm going to collapse the lower portion up and I'm going to line up the top part with the top of my card. I'm trying to center it there, leave about the same on the left and the right, right? And stick that down. Oh, yeah, it helps if you press in the right spot. <clears throat> I forgot the adhesive is not at the top. It's way down here. So I got to press there and then down here. Okay. And now when I release, it is attached to my card. Okay. So that will stand up like so. All right. Now we're ready to make it cute. Who's ready to make it cute? We're going to make it super cute. All right. So we've got this done. Now the fun part begins. So I'm going to bring in, oh, oh, we're going to add, we're going to add a little more DSP here because we can. Um, so I liked Colette's card, how she added designer series paper on top of these parts that pop out. It's just a little extra fun detail. Now, it would have been super smart of me to put that on before I added that piece, <clears throat> but I didn't do that. So let's see if I can add it on now or else it's going to stay blank. Pretty sure I can get it in there. Oh yeah, no problem. Okay, when I do the tutorial on this one, I will, I will have you put all of the designer papers on first. That's just a safer bet, I think. Okay, let's add a little bit. And again, this is optional. You don't have to do this. This piece is uh, one by two and three quarters. And this one is one by four. Got adhesive on my desk now too. Great, awesome. All right, it's everywhere. All right, so we've got that all set and we're ready to decorate our card. That's the fun part. We're gonna do an embossed panel on here. Um, not out of that, because that one's too big. All right, ah, here's the right piece. So our embossed piece is two and three quarters by three. Now I'll give you a little tip. If you're newer to card making, and you're not sure, hello, Yellow Roses, so glad that you're here with us. Um, if you're newer to card making and you have this card and you're like, hmm, what size layer do I need on that? Um, you would measure this and this and you would cut your piece a quarter inch smaller. So my piece, my white piece is two and three quarters by three, which means this must be three and a quarter by three. So just go out a quarter inch smaller. Uh, some people like to only go an eighth of an inch smaller. Um, up to you on how you want to 
proceed with that. So we're going to emboss this piece. And I have a set of embossing folders here. This is a two pack. Um, it's in the annual catalog. These are the, the skinny folders. You get double your money's worth. <laughs> and the skinny folders, you get two uh, in the pack. So this is the splatter and stripes. I thought it would be fun to use the splatter on this. In fact, it would be really fun to use the splatters um, on the white to texture it and make it look more like ice cream. We're going to do it for our background here, but hmm, we might even do that on our cart. We'll have to see. So I have this in here. Now, of course, I need a machine to emboss this with. I am going to grab a very special little machine that um, is only available for a limited time, and it's only available in the Demonstrator Starter Kit. So right now is Celebration for Stampin' Up! So there's lots of great deals. There's savings. Uh, you get a free thing when you place a $50 order or a $100 order here in the U.S. Um, but if you really want to maximize your value, you can purchase a starter kit to give it a try to be a hobby demonstrator. And when you order the starter kit, uh, you can spend $129 on the kit. Um, you get this machine, which is a $65 value. And you also get um, $175 in products of your choice. Or you can use get the $99 kit and get $175 of your choice and just skip the machine. So we're going to emboss. And I got to... I got to look at my plate. So when you get the machine, it comes with all of these pieces. So this one is for using with 3D embossing folders. This is regular embossing folders, and this is for dies. I am using a 3D embossing folder. So I want the number four plate on top and the number one plate on the bottom. So I said this is for using for dies. It's really for using with everything. Um, you just follow the instructions. So I'm going to go ahead and put these two, these three pieces together. And I'm going to feed them through my machine here. Here we go. Crank it through. So you do want to put your hand up here on the top and put some pressure down when you crank that through. Whether it's the big machine or the little machine. Let's... Um, Set this aside. We're going to need it again here. Let's open it up and see how our splatters came out. So cute, right? Hopefully you can make those out on screen. If I tilt them like that, I got them pulled up too high. I've got, um, oh, I've got milkshake on me. <laughs> what a surprise. Okay. So this piece is going to go right on top of here. So um, the mini machine, Jennifer is reminding me in the comments that mini machine is boho blue. And that is going to be a new in color when the catalog comes out. All right. So I am putting the adhesive on my cardstock um, to adhere this piece instead of putting it on here. When I emboss a piece, I prefer to put the adhesive on the thing I'm sticking it to. I just went well in from the sides um, because sometimes when I have a really heavily embossed piece, it will rip with my tape runner. And so just to avoid that happening, I just err on the side of caution. So we're ready for some ice cream. Always ready for some ice cream or a milkshake rather. So let's bring in a piece of uh, basic white here. And this is the stamping cushion. Jennifer, could you look up in the catalog and tell us what page the stamping cushion is on? This is a great investment if you're using our clear stamps, the photopolymer stamps. And if you um, have difficulties getting good solid images with them, this will solve that problem. Um, it just gives you the best results. And it's a little bit hidden in the catalog. I believe it's called the Stampin' Pierce Mat, maybe. Ah, there it is. Jennifer's got it. Page one. Whoa, wrong one. Sorry. <laughs> they pop up so fast. Um, 149 in the annual catalog. And Nicole had some great suggestions with that splatter embossing folder. It's good for beach and ocean, beer and wine with the bubbles and coffee sets. Anything you need froth. Good tip. So um, let's see. 
All right. The stripes and splatters can be found on page 177 in the annual catalog. All right. So let's go ahead and hide that. Let's let's make a milkshake, everybody. Yay. So I am using mint macaron ink. And we are using the share a milkshake stamp. Oh, oh, hold on. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know where the box is. It's oh, here it is. I'm gonna say it's found it. It's somewhere in this disaster. Uh, the share a milkshake stamp set is super cute. Take a drink, everyone. Mmm. Wow, that's so sweet. All right, so um, this is really fun, and I'm gonna give you my best tips for making just awesome cards with this. Some really cleverly shaded stamps in this. And this is what we call a two-step stamping system. So to make our milkshake glass, we're gonna use two images. One is all solid. One is the detail part of the glass. The detail part, I have really bad eyesight, you guys. <laughs> really bad eyesight. And I do better with two-step stamping if I actually stamp the detail part first. So I'm inking up the detail part of my, um, my, uh, you know what, can I do it this way? No, I'm going to do it this way. Uh, my milkshake glass in mint macaron, and I'm going to press it on my thing. And I see I've got something weird on my stamp. Mm. So this is when we flip it over and we use the other side. I have dogs and I frequently get dog hair in my stamps. I don't think that was a dog hair. It looked like a fuzzy. All right. And it just gave me a weird coloration. So I'm gonna just gonna do a do-over. I cleaned my stamp off. We're gonna try it again. That's why we sell this fancy two-sided paper so that if you have a boo-boo, you can do it over, right? So I've got my detail image of my glass. And I know it looks super weird, right? Like it looks like <laughs> there's only half a glass. It's just odd, but it makes sense once you add the other steps. So I'm also inking up the other part of my glass in mint macaron, but before I stamp it, I'm actually going to stamp it off on my scrap paper. And that is removing a lot of the ink from there, okay? didn't remove the ink from that spot, which means I probably have another little fuzzy on there. <gasps> Goodness. All right, I'm just going to do it in the same spot. All right, let's see if that, that looked a little better. And now I'm just going to go right over the top. So because I have the darker one already there, so this is also mint macaron, but it is stamped off. So it's now going to be a lighter version of the same color. And when you do this, you can get more life out of your ink pads. If you think you only have three ink pads, well, when you think about it, when you stamp them off, you can make a lighter color. So you actually, instead of having three ink pads, you actually have six ink pads. So, um, so there is our milkshake glass. Now we have an option today, and I'm not sure. So I'm going to show you this this milkshake and I would like you to vote in the comments and let me know your thoughts. So we can either do, now we're, our goal here is to make a McDonald's, put it in the light here, mine's getting super melty, a McDonald's shamrock shake, which does come with a whole bunch of whip on top and then the green underneath. So my question for you is, do we want the upper part of our milkshake to be white, like I did on this card? Or do we want to stamp it and have it be green? And then we use one of the little uh, topper dies to put a blob of whip topping on the top. So let me know white or green in the comments on the top of our froth for our milkshake. And while you're voting on that, I'm going to grab a, uh, another scrap of basic white here. Now, the McDonald's one does not have a cherry on it. I'm having a cherry on mine. I don't care if McDonald's does it or not because I love that little pop of red. I just think it's super cute. And we're going to put a straw in ours. And the McDonald's straws are red. So we're going to go with... Um, now, the, the McDonald's, technically, they're red striped up and down. You know, close enough. Ours is going to be diagonal. I am going to clean mine because, um, yeah, it's a inky mess because clearly Susan didn't clean it the last time she used it. <clears> him. <throat> So I'm going to clear that off. 
Ooh, make the cherry green. Oh, that's a thought. I'm going to make it red, but that is a, that is a fun idea. You could also um, stamp the little clover from this set. Oh, if you don't mind fussy cutting and fuss, fussy cut out that little clover and stick that in your shake. All right. I've got cords everywhere. Oh my goodness. Armageddon here. All right. Um, I've lost my real red ink pad. Holy cow, you guys. I just had it. <gasps> Found it. It was hiding under the sheer milkshake stamp set. All right. Take a sip, everyone. My goodness. I'm going to run out of milkshake before our video ends. Mm -hmm. All right. So what did you guys vote for? Um, I am seeing, mm, mm, I'm seeing a few greens, but more whites. All right. You got it. Um, I will show you, I actually, before we started, I did do one in green so I can show you what that will look like after the, after we do our one in white here. In fact, I often do an alternate version and post it over on, in my Sue Stampfield Facebook group. Anyone is welcome to join the Sue Stampfield Facebook group. Make sure it's the Sue Stampfield Facebook group. Uh, the Stampfield Stars is my team group. So I've got my little straw stamped there. Clearly, I got way, way bigger piece of paper than I need. Here's how I like to do the cherry. Um, I'm going to take my ink pad and I'm going to ink up just the cherry part. <laughs> So I'm not saying that very well. Just the red part of the cherry. How about that? The cherry part of the cherry, um, not the stem. So I'm just doing it on the edge of the ink pad so that I get just the cherry. And then I'm going to take my basic black marker. Now you could also do brown if you prefer, whatever. I chose basic black because people that don't have markers, you can actually order just the black marker on its own. It's the only one I think that you can get just that color. And I'm just using the, the brush tip of the marker, the side of the marker, to just brush some black on my cherry there. <laughs> Got adhesive on my finger. Everything's sticking to me. And then I'm just going to go ahead and stamp my cherry right here onto my white. And, okay, is there anything else I need? I think we're good. I think we're good. All right. So we're going to go ahead and close this up. And let's cut this out. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put that away. I think I'm done with that. Find out. All right. Let's, let's uh, cut our milkshake out. <gasps> it's so cute, you guys. Oh, love these dies. All right. Let's bring in our little mini but mighty machine here. And we are doing die cutting. So we want the number one. And we want two of the number two plates. And it tells us that right on the picture. And I'm going to give you a tip for your best results with this machine. I just recently got a tip from um, one of the Stampin' Up! Uh, uh, employees on this, uh, the, on a really good practice with your machine. So I've got the white one pushed out, the, the clear one uh, back. And I'm putting another clear one on top and it's lined up with the white one. So it's kind of like the letter E. <laughs> Forgot my die. <laughs> All right, what do I do with the dies, everyone? It's not gonna cut itself, Susan. <laughs> Found it. All right, take a sip, everyone. Oh my goodness. Chaos is here. All right, so I'm hoping. Now I got to find a post-it note. Ugh, it's under a pile of stamps that I can see the corner of it. All right, found it. <laughs> I don't know, Jennifer, we might have a record breaker tonight. <sighs> All right, I am lining up my die with my milkshake glass here. I just want to make sure I don't see any white. I should only see stamped parts. Line that up. And pop that in. I'm going to just cut the, the cherry and straw separately because I'm all over the place tonight. And oh, you know what? I forgot. I forgot to cut our ice cream. I was like, why did I cut such a big piece? Well, that's because it was for the ice cream. All right. So there we've got our, our milkshake glass, but I'm going to put it back in here because, well, you know what? I think I can get it out of this one. Yeah. I, I've got room over here. Okay grab the other die. So let's grab this little piece right here. 
and we're gonna take our straw all right i gotta tell you what the cutest die in this whole set is you guys i haven't even done the waffle cone yet that's gonna be super fun but this um and this is like reminds me of that chocolate ganache you get at fancy restaurants yum um so this is a spoon and on our pop-up slider card i cut it from silver and you can actually just when you cut the ice cream die it cuts a slit for the spoon or for the straw so how cool is that now i'm going to grab the straw here and the cherry and the ice cream <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and tack those down. All right, so somebody said they put packaging tape over their milkshake glass before they die cut it so that it looks shiny. Who said that? That's a great idea. That was Terry. I love it, Terry. Thank you for sharing. What a fun idea. All right, so I'm just positioning my uh, straw over my stamped image. I'm not positioning it very well. <laughs> and then the next up is the cherry here. So with the cherry, I'm going to zoom in just for a moment here. Um, with the cherry, there is a little dot. Hang on, I got to find my take your pick tool. I need to take your pick tool up. Oh, found it. All right, take another sip, everyone. All right, we're going to just uh, position our cherry in place here and then you want the tip of the stem to show in that little hole can you see that little hole there I cannot see the tip of my stem so I know I'm not quite in the right spot to go over just a little bit where the heck is it well there it is way over there way over there otherwise your stem will cut wonky so just use that little hole to line up the stem, let me get it lined up here, right? I know I'm off camera, guys, sorry. I had to pull it towards me. Remember, bad eyesight. <laughs> All right, so can you see that? Is that too blurry? How I've got the tip um, is showing in that little hole. And now I'm gonna cross my fingers that I don't move it <laughs> when I'm putting it on here. I'm gonna smack another post-it note on it. Let's zoom back out. Not too far, we'll see the mess. <laughs> got some tearing tape over there so much but if you on these little dies um you're gonna look for that little opening we also have the ice cream here the ice cream we didn't stamp the we didn't stamp the ice cream so it i'm not worried about it it just needs to stay on the white paper <laughs> that's pretty easy right all right so again we're gonna stagger the upper and lower plates just slightly and tuck the middle one back and just crank this right through Fingers crossed, nothing moved. Is it like midnight yet? <laughs> Feels like I'm going long tonight. Mm, sorry, Jennifer. Sorry, everyone. All right, here we go. Here's our look how cute, you guys. Oh my gosh. And no calories. Not that cherries probably have many. I guess maraschino cherries might. And then here's that ice cream so you can see how it cuts the slit for the straw or the spoon and then we have our straw perfect all right so let's get rid of all this stuff all right i gotta put my <clears throat> sorry i shouldn't shout i had to put my uh, straw back on my magnet because i could totally see that piece getting lost all right let's bring our card back in here and let's build a milkshake guys all right so we're gonna slide our straw into that slit um, I just like to bend it a little bit. I suppose you could use your take your pick tool to widen it, but it's it's a pretty good size slit, so it's not too difficult. Which end should I probably this the flat end should go up, huh? Yeah, let's do the flat end up. All right, um, and obviously I don't want that uh, showing. Now you also can actually stick a glue dot. Let's do that. Let's grab our glue dots, and we're gonna stick a glue dot on the back side of our ice cream, right below the slit. I realize you probably can't see this white on white very well. Um, and then I'm just gonna smush the end of the straw onto that glue dot, just to kind of hold it in place for me. And then I'm gonna take my 
milkshake here, my shamrock shake, and I'm going to take some dimensionals and stick this on the front of our card. Oh, see there, you can see my boo-boo from earlier, but nobody else will see it. It's our little secret, guys. Don't tell. <laughs> Don't tell. All right. Do so you want to build a milkshake? Yeah, there we go. Yes, please. Sign me up. All right. So there we have the bottom, our, our, the glass of our milkshake. And then we're going to add our uh, ice cream on top here. Now I do have somewhere in this disaster. Um, okay. So I had mentioned another option earlier of being able to stamp that. So we could have done this where we had uh, green for the milkshake and then just there's two dyes in here that are kind of like toppings for the ice cream or the milkshake. So we could have had just sort of a little blob, oh, <laughs> went flying. We could have just had a little blob of whip on top. So that is that is uh, absolutely an option when you are reproducing this card. You could do it that way if you prefer. Um, viewers voted to go, the most people voted for the white, which is super cute. So we're going to skip the extra, extra whip here and stick this on. All right. All right. So there we've got our card or our milkshake. And then of course we need a cherry on top. So I'm just going to use a glue dot to attach the little cherry. Oh, I love the cherry. You're right. You could do, because they do have green maraschino cherries. So whoever in the comments said you could do a green one, oh, totally good. So there, oh wait, I don't like it there. I'm going to push it right here. Whoops, now it's sideways. Hang on. <laughs> so picky, you guys. <gasps> so picky. All right, so there we've got our little cherry on top. Now, before I went live, I took my Lucky Clover stamp set right here and I stamped uh, Hattri Hella. Happy St. Patrick's Day in a tuxedo black. And I thought we could stick that across the bottom here. You also could stick it at the top. Let me know in the comments if you want it at the bottom or at the top. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and stamp one of my favorite stamps in the Lucky Clover stamp set. And I should mention this stamp set was offered as a bundle with a punch that punched out this particular clover. The punch sold out early and they can't get any more in. So the punch is retired. The bundle is retired. But this is an awesome set, you guys. Um, if you do any St. Patrick's Day cards, this is a great set. So I'm going to go ahead and ink up my little clovers here. I want to call them shamrocks, but they're not. <laughs> and I'm going to grab, now this is an orange rubber, so I don't need that cushion. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to, sure you are, Sue. I'm going to add some clovers right on top of my St. Patrick's Day greeting here. There we go. Just make it all St. Patrick's Day. Um, top, 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 bottom, bottom, bottom. <laughs> Uh, top, three for top, two for bottom, two for bottom. that rolls out. I think it's super, super close, but I think there's a few more for the top. So let's go top. All right. But I think you could go with either, right? And we'll just put a couple dimensionals on here. All right. And pop that on. And that can go at the top of our card here. So, all right, there we go. Now this particular style of card, you put the greeting on the back. It's not the type of card that opens up with an inside, if you know what I mean. So the greeting goes on the back and we're going to have to cut that. Sorry again, I forgot to do that one. That is your standard here in the U.S., which means, uh, oops, Things are falling off and everything. Hang on. That is four by five and a quarter for the back. Or you can make it smaller if you don't want that much white. Totally your choice. Four by five and a quarter. All right. There we go. All right. 
and then we can stamp the words sending luck and love. Um, I have to clean them because they're clearly dirty <laughs> and I have no idea what green it is, but I have a feeling it's granny apple green because that's what we did last time and Susan did not clean up her mess after our last video. Okay, it's out there now. <sighs> My dirty laundry has now been shared. I did not clean up from the last video, which was on Tuesday. But I was super busy, you guys. Okay, so I'm going to do sending luck and love right there. And then we're going to add what the heck. I love these little clovers. I'm going to add a few more across the top. Just because we can. And that is going to go on the back. And I can write a note. All right. Or we have a gift card we got to figure out what we're doing with i don't know what we're doing with our gift card here so we can write a note here please buy yourself a shamrock shake and we can put our gift card just in the envelope we could i don't know would it stay in there we can slide it right in here you guys it's just loose uh but we could we could just slide it right in there we could make a little pocket for it on the back with a with a with a a piece of designer paper like so and just have it tucked down in the pocket actually we need it a little bit longer if we're going to do that hang on hold the bone Sorry, I could be cutting it here with y'all. I don't know why I'm cutting it over there where you can't see it. All right, so I'm doing one and a half. Let's try one and a half by four and a quarter and see if that would work. Maybe a little, I like the pocket too. I like the pocket too. Oh, your daughter was born on St. Patty's Day. Aw. Um, yeah, I like the pocket idea too. Um, you know what I might just do? Uh, would that be too lazy? Be kind of lazy. All right, I'll do tear and tape. I was going to do uh, mini dimensionals. <laughs> it seems kind of lazy though. All right, let's see if it works. It might be too snug to fit in there, but if it is, we'll do it the long way, right? There's always a way. I'm going to put the tear and tape as far out as I can. And I did make this the whole width of the card. So it's four and a quarter by one and a half. And we're just going to pop off our backing piece. And um, you also could punch a little notch in here, a little um, half circle or something um, to make it even easier to pull out the gift card. I feel like it's going to be sticking up enough that that's not really. Oh, look at that. It's perfect, you guys. Oh, it's perfect. But yeah, you absolutely could have put a glue dot on the card and slide it in the top. But this fits just fine. Um, I maybe should have put a glue dot at the bottom of the pocket because I suppose it could slide right out. I don't really think that's I know it's not going to go anywhere in the envelope and it's in here pretty snug. So I think I'll just leave it, but I'll in the instructions, I'll, I'll mention that you could put a glue dot down there just as a little stopper so that it doesn't fall out. And then you can still sign it. And if you want to write a little note here about go buy yourself a, a shamrock shake, uh, you certainly could. But there we have our St. Patrick's Day shamrock shake card. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> so uh, if you like to do... Uh, St. Patty's Day cards. Uh, we also had uh, in the um, pop out slider tutorial bundle, we have um, this cutie with the owl and inside is a little leprechaun owl. And they has two, you have two different hat options in that tutorial bundle. Again, the tutorial bundle is available on my blog, suestampfield.com. Oh, I need to show our measurements. Okay, I gotta, um, huh. let's see here. I have to edit these. Oh no, it was right, wasn't it? Okay, I think we're okay. All right, so here are our dimensions for 
Let me put these aside for this. And I'm going <clears> to <throat> shrink it down and hold it still so you can take a screenshot. Wait, i got to move the... <sighs> I gotta move the trash. I gotta make it pretty. Oh wait, wait, wait. Let's let's add that in our shot. Okay, I'll tilt it like that. There we go. Okay, now you can take a screenshot of our sham. Oh wait, 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 wait. Okay, <laughs> our shamrock uh, uh, standing. What do I call it? It's right there on the screen, Susan. Standing pop up card is right here. All right. So what I don't have on these dimensions is the, uh, and it says, oh, you know what? I thought I had changed this before we went live, but apparently I didn't. So sorry, everyone. It's not an embossed top on this one, um, but that is the top dimensions. All right. Let's just, let's just fix that. DSP. All right. <laughs> Save. Let's see. Okay, does that look better? I think that looks better. All right, now we can take a screenshot with our little shamrock shake. There we go. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me tonight, for taking all these sips tonight. I think we might have had a record-breaking number of sips this evening. And uh, yes, milkshake card and owls are in the tutorial, along with, along with, the bunny, which has a turtle on the inside, and the sentimental park version, because we have our, I love cute and I love elegant. And I know that's a little bit weird, but that's how I roll. <laughs> and then we have this beautiful card. So all five are in the tutorial and I have a whole separate tutorial just focused on doing that card base so that you can decorate it any way you want. All right. Not a record, only seven. Oh man. <laughs> All right. I'm going to, I think my record was nine, maybe. Does that sound right? So thank you all for hanging out with me tonight for another one of our crazy stamping adventures. I appreciate you all so much. And again, you can subscribe for la, 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 right here. Free project sheet emails can be found at suestampfield.com. Click on subscribe. And I'll see you next week on Tuesday at 7.30 Central for our next stamping adventure. Hope to see you there. Take care, everyone. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.